I am not a doctor and this is not medical advice. What you're watching is my journey through cancer. I hope you'll find thoughts here that inspire you as well as strategies for beating cancer that you too can deploy. But always consult your doctor before deployment. If you want to make God laugh, tell him about your plans. Or life is what happens to you while you're making other plans. So say Woody Allen and John Lennon, respectively, though these are just pithy ways of expressing a much older idea. When I got a diagnosis of cancer, all my plans pretty much went on the back burner, if not totally, out the window, um, in order to make way to battle cancer. I'm so sick of battling cancer, and I don't want to have to do it again, though I'm not planning on that because I kind of think that if you make God laugh, it might also sort of piss him off and he'll be moved to knock you around a little bit and set you straight. So knowing that we will never know what awaits us, we have to do the best we can with what we have. And the best I can do that any of us can do is to keep playing on a wickedly uneven field. The first component of my attitude adjustment program is to know and to follow the latest cancer prevention guidelines. And you know what? This part isn't that hard because it's all basic. Um, the newest cancer prevention guidelines make it seem easy because you don't have to buy special equipment or eat exotic foods or go out of your way to do anything other than what we've been told all our lives um, will help to keep us healthy. It all comes down to diet and exercise. Specifically, the newest cancer prevention guidelines call for 300 minutes or a little more than 40 minutes a day of moderately intense activity. I work out twice a week with a trainer for an hour each day and I speed walk for a minimum of 30 minutes every day, mostly on a treadmill, but since spring is here, I'm looking forward to be being able to go outdoors and do that on most days. Um, but that's a total of 330 minutes a week, so um, I've got the minimum covered on the exercise front. Um, the next advice is about diet, and again, it all revolves around advice the medical community has been giving us all our lives. Um, eat lots of fruits and vegetables, and limit your consumption of red meat and processed meats. Um, I think I'm good here too, although we had pot roast last night, and I do like pot roast. Um, Foods just were not generally appealing to me for a long, long time. Uh, treatment destroys your appetite, or at least it did for me. Um, I also put myself on a keto diet during treatment, uh, which meant as few carbs as possible, and I've got to jump back onto the keto bandwagon. Um, I mean, I've had one soda since completing treatment, uh, a root beer with some barbecue, which I have always enjoyed in the past, but uh, the soda really upset my stomach, so I'm not too sad about giving up the occasional pleasure of soda, um, but I've got to return to being careful about the carb situation. Um, oatmeal for breakfast, good. Oatmeal with lots of brown sugar, not so good. Um, that's because cancer cells feed on sugar. And if there's one fucking cancer cell left in my body, I'm going to do my very best to starve it to death. Next on the um, cancer prevention guidelines is to not drink alcohol, or for women, not to have more than one drink a day, and for men, no more than two drinks a day. Um, I quit drinking entirely right after my diagnosis last May, um, and all the way through treatment only Lately, I've been enjoying a glass of wine with dinner a few nights a week, like maybe two nights a week. Uh, so I'm well within parameters for this guideline as well, although wine isn't keto compliant. Um, so I need to be careful about really drinking only one glass at a sitting because I could happily enjoy two or three or, you know, more. Finally, the latest cancer prevention guidelines recommend that you don't gain weight. I've said it before, cancer is a hell of a way to slim down, um, but it's one of the, um, let's call it a perk of cancer. Um, I've nearly made it to the goal weight I set before I even knew I had cancer. 
Now all I have to do for the most part, say for about six pounds I'd still like to shed, um, is stay where I am. And uh, they say that 11% of cancers in women and 5% in men are caused by the patient being overweight. Keeping my weight in check is something I'm going to have to do for the rest of my life. And I've been up the scale and down the scale, so this is the part to which I am going to have to pay the most attention. The upside is that these guidelines are also recommended when you are diagnosed with osteoporosis, uh, which I have been. So two birds, one stone. But all in all, um, it's kind of a letdown, right? You want something that seems more magical to do to keep from getting cancer. You want a little blue pill to take, a special concoction to drink, um, a spell to cast. That's not how it works. And at the end of the day, you don't know if any of it will work, um, but you do the best you can with what you have. Um, not that you don't try to have more. Um, my research continues, and if I find some other valuable, well-vetted, science-based ideas, foods, or supplements, or activities that will help, I'll try and report back to you. Meanwhile, if you want to follow a deeper dive into what I'm calling the not safe for work aspects of cancer treatment and recovery, you can follow me on Patreon. The link is below. Um, thank you for watching, and I will see you again with another update on the attitude adjustment journey soon. Thanks. If you liked this video or found it helpful, give it a like, subscribe, and don't forget to ring the bell.